Hello and a very warm welcome to our YouTube channel Corrosion Control and Inspections. We will be sharing informative videos on various corrosion controls and its preventive measures, non-destructive as well as destructive inspections, welding, metallurgy, coating selections and paintings as well as asset integrity assessments related topics. Your valuable feedback will be important for us. Do not forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to our channel. Press bell icon to keep yourself notified about upcoming videos. In this video we will discuss what is a heat exchanger. What are the types of heat exchangers? We will also discuss what are shell and tube heat exchangers. What are corrosion mechanisms in heat exchangers? How to implement risk-based inspection strategies in heat exchangers. A heat exchanger is a device used to transfer heat between two or more fluids. The fluids can be single or two-phase and, depending on the exchanger type, may be separated or in direct contact. Devices involving energy sources such as nuclear fuel pins or fired heaters are not normally regarded as heat exchangers although many of the principles involved in their design are the same. In order to discuss heat exchangers it is necessary to provide some form of categorization. There are two approaches that are normally taken. The first considers the flow configuration within the heat exchanger while the second is based on the classification of equipment type primarily by construction. Both cases are separately considered here. There are four basic flow configurations of heat exchangers. An idealized counterflow exchanger in which the two fluids flow parallel to each other but in opposite directions. This type of flow arrangement allows the largest change in temperature of both fluids and is therefore most efficient, where efficiency is the amount of actual heat transferred compared with the theoretical maximum amount of heat that can be transferred. In co-current flow heat exchangers, the streams flow parallel to each other and in the same direction. This is less efficient than countercurrent flow but does provide more uniform wall temperatures. Crossflow heat exchangers are intermediate in efficiency between countercurrent flow and parallel flow exchangers. In these units, the streams flow at right angles to each other. In industrial heat exchangers, Hybrids of the above flow types are often found. Examples of these are combined crossflow, counterflow heat exchangers and multi-pass flow heat exchangers. A shell and tube heat exchanger consists of a number of tubes mounted inside a cylindrical shell. Two fluids can exchange heat. One fluid flows over the outside of the tubes while the second fluid flows through the tubes. The fluids can be single or two-phase and can flow in a parallel or a cross-counter flow arrangement. The shell and tube exchanger consists of four major parts. Front end this is where the fluid enters the tubicide of the exchanger. Rear end this is where the tubicide fluid leaves the exchanger or where it is returned to the front header in exchangers with multiple tube side passes. Tube bundle this comprises of the tubes, tube sheets, baffles and tie rods etc. to hold the bundle together. Shell, this contains the tube bundle. Plate and frame heat exchangers consist of two rectangular end members which hold together a number of embossed rectangular plates with holes on the corner for the fluids to pass through. Each of the plates is separated by a gasket which seals the plates and arranges the flow of fluids between the plates. See Figure 9. This type of exchanger is widely used in the food industry because it can easily be taken apart to clean. 
If leakage to the environment is a concern it is possible to weld two plates together to ensure that the fluid flowing between the welded plates cannot leak. However, as there are still some gaskets present it is still possible for leakage to occur. Brazed plate heat exchangers avoid the possibility of leakage by brazing all the plates together and then welding on the inlet and outlet ports. The biggest threat to heat exchangers that uses carbon steel tubes is oxidation or corrosion of the heat transfer surface of its tubes. The reaction between oxygen and iron is the most commonly observed form of corrosion. Galvanic corrosion is common in shell and tube heat exchangers at the contacts between the tubes and the baffles or tube sheets when different metals are used for those parts. Excessive fluid velocity on either the shell or tube side of the heat exchanger can cause damaging erosion as the tubing metal wears. If corrosion is already present, it can be accelerated. Erosion has the potential to remove the tube material's protective film, exposing fresh metal to further attack. Tube corrosion on carbon steel tubes results in decreasing thermal permeation and eventually the deterioration of the tubes. This problem is difficult to combat and is often only detected when tubes become so corroded their thermal performance levels decrease, the fluid flow is significantly reduced or the tubes are perforated and leak. Erosion of tubes is the physical wearing of the metal by fluids. Fluids with high levels of total dissolved solids, such as silica, silt or sea water containing salt, sand and marine life, catalyze the erosion of tubes both internally and at the leading edges of the inlet tubes. Steam or water hammer is a powerful force and can cause the rupture or collapse of either the shell or the tubes of a heat exchanger. Hammer generally occurs where there has been a surge in pressure commonly caused by a sudden interruption in cooling water flow, the rapid vaporization of stagnant water or pump malfunction. Thermal fatigue occurs when extreme temperature differences between the shell and tubes result in tube flexing. Vibration and resonance, from whatever source and whether induced externally and internally, can impose powerful forces on heat exchanger tubes and, once vibration or resonance is commenced it can increase in intensity to a point where tubes rupture and fail or lose their seal with the tube sheet and leak. Pitting results from the electrochemical potential set up by differences inside and outside of what is commonly referred to as a concentration cell. The oxygen-rich environment in this cell acts as an anode and the metal surface is a cathode, resulting in the metal surface being slowly pitted by the chemical reaction. The results obtained by implementing of integrated risk management system lead to a better understanding of risk consequences, accurate classification of the component in a consequence, probability matrix type and by default raise of business efficiency due to increased safety in operation. Components of a plant can be ranked according to their operation risk level, with direct results on Increase safety in operation due to focus efforts in accurate evaluation of components identified as having high or very high risk level and developing an inspection plan according to the level of risk. Financial return, reducing the costs of unnecessary inspections of low risk components, reducing downtime losses and reducing costs of failure. Based on risk assessment results can be developed a detailed inspection program for risk mitigation of critical components. Thanks for visiting our channel. We hope you liked our content. In order to know more about various corrosion control measures and state-of-the-art technologies as well as certifications and jobs-related info videos, 
Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment on our channel.